Do you want to add more movement to your cutout characters without hand drawing each animation? Well, how about using the plastic tool to add that flexibility to them? Well, that's what we'll look at today. Hello ladies and gents, and welcome to today's video. If you're new here, my name's Darren, and I make weekly tutorials for open tunes and the occasional animation. And if that sounds like the kind of thing you're into, why not subscribe to follow along? Over the past few weeks we've taken a look at cutout animation, and we've gone through the basics of rigging a simple character with BB-8, a more complex character, Skelly the Skeleton, with plenty of tips for animating and working with open tunes, alternative ways to connect them using hooks, and then over the last two weeks I'll walk you through the basics of using the plastic tool, using internal skeletons and general deformations. And you'll find a link to this playlist in the description below, and it might be worth watching these to catch up with the basics before watching this one. But this week I want to continue with the plastic tool to show how you can make use of it within cutout animation, to add a different kind of flexibility to your characters without having to draw separate drawings. And today I've got three ways to use it. To animate the main character, to animate items outside of but associated with your character, and to make the body parts fit together better as they move. So first we'll use the plastic tool to make part of the body more flexible and animate that. So you can use it to add more movement without drawing frame by frame. For instance, to show the character taking a deep breath. So what we need to do is on the body level, add a plastic mesh. Okay, and then to build the skeleton. And as always, after you've built the skeleton, you want to make sure that the character animates as you expect them to. Yep, that's fine. And if we take a look at the new mesh column in the schematic, you'll see it's automatically been inserted before the actual body drawing. So let's just animate him. Okay, so notice now that his body size changes that the arms are no longer connected. And in a previous video, I showed how you could use the hook tool to keep moving parts connected, which works great when you've animated frame by frame. But if you've got a mesh, you can't add a hook point to it. What you can do is to connect to vertices in the skeleton. So when I built the skeleton, I purposely put a point at the point where the left arm connects, where the head connects, and I need to add another one where the right arm connects as well. And then if we go to the schematic, instead of connecting just point to point with the red and blue circles, clicking this button allows us to connect directly between hook points or between vertices of a skeleton. So what we want to change is instead of the arm connecting to the body drawing, we want it to connect to the body mesh to one of the specific vertices. So if we take a look at that, and if you hover over any of the vertices, you'll see a number in brackets so the arm is number 7 vertex, the head is number 5, and the right arm is number 8. So the left arm needs to go to point number 7. So we connect this through to a new connection point on the body mesh. And then we change that by clicking and dragging on the arrows up to number 7. But then what sometimes happens is the body part is offset. So all you need to do is to go to the first frame for the left arm and then adjust its position. And I'll just do the same with the head. And again I'll fix the offset. And the same for the right arm. And now you can see as the character breathes, both the arms and the head move with the body. So you can use the plastic tool to add a mesh and a skeleton to each part of your body. And then while animating using the standard animate tool with position and rotation, you can also add some extra flexibility. But depending on the movement that you add, you want to make the connections between the body parts using the vertices in the mesh, which makes it slightly more complicated. So, the second and simplest way to use the plastic tool is to use it to animate part of your character that's not part of the main skeleton. 
like a hat, scarf, eyebrows, or as in this case, the moustache. Okay, so because the moustache is separate from the main body, you haven't got to worry about any kind of connection, and you can just animate it independently of the other body parts. So let's add a small animation for that. Okay, so there's just a little silly animation with a moustache. So the final way we're going to use the plastic tool today is to use it to help the joints fit better together when the body parts move. So for instance, when you rotate the arm using the animate or skeleton tool, you'll sometimes see a gap between the arm and the body. And you can try and line the centre points for rotation and the drawing to hide the gap a little bit. But by using the plastic tool, we don't need to worry too much about aligning them. Let's take a quick look. So what I'll do is I'll animate this character lifting this weight above his head with the left arm and then we'll use a plastic tool to make the joints fit together better. And now I've got a skeleton on the arm mesh, I can connect the vertex number 2 of the arm to vertex number 7 of the body, so that when the body moves, the arm moves with it. So that's the animation for the arm movement, but the arm doesn't quite fit into the shoulder as you might expect. So what we can do is animate these extra joins that I've put into the side of the arm to try and make it fit better into the body. So on frame one, we can move that up to there and perhaps bring this one down a little bit. And then just make sure it stays connected as we go through the animation. So here's a perfect example of where the join doesn't fit properly. The drawing you see disappears behind the body, but there's a corner sticking out. And you could change the drawing to circle this round here to try and make it look more natural. But by using the plastic tool, you can just stretch that corner to fit inside the body. Okay, so let's take a look at that. And now the arm fits much better. And you can tweak this further if you want to, but hopefully you can see how it helps to join your character's body parts together. So you can see how the plastic tool can be used to make your cutout characters much more flexible without having to draw frame by frame as much. And in a couple of weeks I'll be showing how I remove the line where the two parts of the left arm intersect and where the right arm joins the body. But next week I'll be taking a look at what to do if you have multiple drawings in a level, to add specific hand positions or for a character turnaround. But if they have the same external shape and size, they'll work just fine as it is. But if not, then the mesh won't cover it and you won't be able to use it. So for instance, for a head turn, a single mesh and skeleton isn't appropriate, it just won't fit. And only parts of the moustache that are in the moustache mesh will be shown. So you need to add a separate mesh for each drawing. And that's what we'll be looking at next week. And that's a guarantee. Oh.